All right, folks, let's uh, move on and get into the tall weeds involved with valuing equity. Go ahead and empty my pockets here. I don't like having things in my pockets. All right, how do we value equity? Well, there are many models used to value stocks, but they all really boil down to this. What cash flow will a business generate? So what is cash flow? Cash flow is the increase in cash that we have after all of your operating and investing cash outflows. So you take your cash inflows, less your cash outflows, what you have left over is your free cash flow. And that is what you're buying. Okay? This is the cash that you use to pay a dividend, to hire more people, to buy plant equipment, and to buy other companies, among other things. So a partial list of what we do with our free cash flow. Once we establish what our free cash flow will be, then we have to determine what discount rate or multiple we should use to find the present value of the projected cash flow. This is the price we should pay for the free cash flow. So we first ascertain what we're buying, which is free cash flow, and then we ascertain how much we should pay for that free cash flow. Finding both of these components, cash flow and the discount rate, are very uncertain exercises. For example, how can we know with certainty what the demand and what the competition will be for a company's products and services in the future? In the investment business, we often use this disclaimer. Past performance does not guarantee future results. And that is true for investments, it is true for projecting cash flows, it is true for projecting discount rates or multiples. Just because something worked in the past doesn't mean it will happen again in the future. But the past is the best uh, guide we have to the future. How can we know if the prices and costs of a company, and hence their profit margins, will hold up in the future? These are all uncertainties. How can we know what investments, the cash outflows that a company will have to make in order to generate cash inflows? How do we know what a company is going to have to spend? What if interest rates go up or multiples for stocks go down after we make the investment? All these things impact the price we should pay, a fair price, for a company or for a stock. So we will use, we'll start with the corporate value model. This is the model that the private equity industry uses, the hedge fund industry uses. If you are thinking about uh, taking a large position in a company and you want to value the entire company and or its stock, you will most likely use this corporate value model. So we will have to project cash flows that the business might generate in the future, and then we'll have to find a discount rate, which will be used to find the present value of these expected cash flows, which will give us our total value or enterprise value of a business, once we find the total value or enterprise value, we can find the total equity value by subtracting out debt and adding cash on the balance sheet. Once we find the total equity value of a business, we can find the, uh, the price of an individual share of equity by simply dividing total equity value by the number of shares outstanding. And that's what we're going to do. Okay? So let's project cash flows. Projections are educated guesses of what a company's income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement will look like for multiple periods of time in the future. They are guesses because of the uncertainty involved in our world. They are educated because they are based on variables or factors that have been considered and that have some basis in reality. For example, using the history of an existing company, or the track record of a company in a similar business is the foundation or at least the starting point for making projections. In other words, projections are not intended to be wild guesses with no reflection of reality. Because of uncertainty, financial analysts most often generate multiple versions of cash flow projections that reflect a range of positive and negative assumptions. And so typically we see three cash flow projections, a most likely case, a best case, 
and a worst case. All right, let's start our company projections. We'll develop common size financial statements, like the income statement below. Okay, here's Apple, we're gonna use Apple, and here is their income statement. Notice that we do not have interest expense on here, and we do not have net income. Instead, we have operating profit and taxes. Then we take our operating profit, add our depreciation, subtract our taxes, and we get operating cash flow. And that is what we're trying to figure out. What will our operating cash flows be? Then what cash outflows will we have to give us free cash flow? So here we have Apple's income statement. Okay. First, we have to project sales. If we're going to use this to project our income statement, we first project sales. Then we'll divide every other line item into sales. And please note, okay, well, first, by dividing every line item into sales, we will be converting these dollar figures into percentages. Okay? Secondly, here's an example. If sales are a million dollars and cost of goods are $500,000, what percentage of sales will cost the goods be? And it will be 500,000 divided by a million, 50%. Please note that these percentages are not growth rates, year-to-year -year growth rates. They are each line item divided into sales. In other words, cost of goods sold, $87,846 divided into 156,508. Cost of goods sold is 56.13% of sales. 2011, it was 59.52%. 2010, it was 60.62%. All right, one advantage of using common size statements, this approach of using common size statements is speed. You can pretty quickly forecast financial statements with this method. As it is with all ratios, you do have to pay attention to the trends and the peer analysis before you start just extrapolating from the past. Don't just use past uh, percentages. That's, they are a starting point. We have to uh, be a little more subtle and nuanced to use to project into the future what we think these, rate, these percentages are going to look like. Alright, so let's start by projecting the top line for projecting sales. For a company that has a history, we'll look at the growth rate of sales over the last several years. Analysts like to link the growth rate of a company's sales to some economic series. Analysts, most analysts work for investment firms, and every investment firm had, has some, an economics team. And the economics team covers a lot of economic data. They look at macroeconomic data. And one of the things that they might look at if they're looking at a company like Apple that sells consumer products is the macroeconomic data for expenditures on electronics. So at these Wall Street firms, the economics team will discuss some economic data, and then the analyst will have a cause and effect. They'll do a correlation between the outlook for spending on electronics and how that might impact Apple's sales. Okay? We also must consider uh, company changes that might affect the growth rate. So as we're looking at growth rates in the past, we talk to management and we say, hey, what will your growth rate look like going forward? And what are some things that we might look at? Things like new products or services by the company. Apple is always coming up with new products or services. New markets to operate in, can you say China? Okay. New distribution channels, new ways of getting products and services into the hands of the customer. Okay. New uses for existing products. This happens a lot in the prescription medication field where uh, drugs are created to treat one uh, uh, problem and then you find out that they're good for multiple problems. Okay? New technology that's out there that you can use in your products. Okay? Or maybe making acquisitions. These are all things that companies do in order to impact, hopefully in a positive way, their growth rate of sales. Okay, so you talk to management about these things. We also look at things that might impact the industry, like new competition or regulations that are rolled in from, from uh, Washington. These might 
greatly affect the growth rate going forward. So don't forget about competition or regulation when you're talking to the company. We might compute the growth rate using the geometric mean equation, the Kager. Here it is. Okay. But we have to go beyond that. We're going to compute changes for individual years to see if there's a pattern or a trend. Be careful applying an average if there are if the trend if there's a definite trend either up or down. We have to take that into consideration before we simply apply an average. Okay. Once we make projections, you keep up with quarterly changes to see how actual changes compare with your projections. How close are we? What adjustments do we have to make to our projections? Now that the data is actually coming out, what is it telling us about our projections? Are we close? All right, here's Apple's example. Here are their sales. Okay. So we see their sales, 65,000, 108,000, 157,000. This is the growth rate year to year. Okay. So what do we notice? Well, first we notice that growth rate is really high. And this is actually in billions, by the way, 65 billion, 108 billion, 157 billion. It's a big company, folks. The growth rate is really high. That's the first thing we notice. The second thing we notice is the growth rate is trending down. It was 66% in 2011, and it was only 45% um, in 2012. What is the average? We're going to uh, take our average. Here's our Kager. Our average is 54.9%. Is that the number you would use for next year? I wouldn't. If my life depended on it, I wouldn't use the average because it seems to be going down. Okay? So we look at the last two years, then we talk with management. Guess what management tells us? We feel comfortable with a 35% growth rate. That's what management is telling us. Okay? So we're going to add one to that right here. One plus our growth rate times last year's number, and we get next year's number. There's our sales forecast. Okay? Now that we have our sales forecast, we're going to project the rest of the income statement, and we'll do that in the next clip. Shalom.